Humans are not that against lizard women. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not even gonna go try to explain this. It's, you know what you're getting into, right? Oh, is this like a uh, sex the furry titty and furry shades of gay stuff? Timeline? In the murky depths of history, where even the chroniclers draw a blank, nestled along the shores of mighty Lake Bacal, thrived the Slavs. His face. Robust and strikingly beautiful, they defied the passage of centuries, untouched by disease. Their offspring, adorned with lustrous blood locks and piercing blue eyes, sprang forth and eagerly took to the fields mere hours after birth. Blessed by the mystical waters of Lake Baikal, the Slavs owed their vigor to its enchanted essence, as sweet as molasses. Thus they dwelled in their own hyper hyperborean utopia, free from worldly woes until one fateful day when the heavens unfurled, and lo and behold, the eerie critters, the lizards, descended from the sky. The lizards launched assaults on Slavic villages, laying waste to cities' fields, plundering trade routes to Africa and Asia. The war dragged on relentlessly, claiming countless lives of men and women alike. The Slavs found themselves on the brink of defeat at the hands of the lizards. Enslavement by these foreign monsters seemed imminent. Yet, in their darkest hour, the wise men convened and besieged Perun for salvation to safeguard the sacred Slavic lands. And Perun thundered his response, Go get them, boys. Screw them up. Invigorated by such wisdom, the Slavs charged forth. A glorious battle ensued on the banks of the River Cal, as the Slavs relentlessly pushed the lizard folk back all the way through the Caspian Sea to the depths of Atlantis. And in the aftermath of said battle, Perun cast a chilling curse upon the invaders. While the frost merely tingled the Slavs' cheeks, the lizards struggled, succumbing to hibernation, vanishing for the time being. As time passed, the memory of the lizards faded from Slavic minds, Relegated to mere fairy tales, spooky stories spun to frighten children. But Perun's curse proved temporary. With the fire embrace of Yurilo the sun, the glacier melted, and the lizards stirred from their slumber. Waking to find the Slavs flourishing, expanding their territories, and fortifying their frames both literally and figuratively. Driven by envy, the lizards yearned to conquer the Slavs, eager to claim the secrets of the marvelous Baikal water and the fertile lands to rear the reptilian offspring. However, they faced a formidable obstacle. And thus, our tale begins. The saga of the Bogatir and the warrior, the widow and the four-eyed scholar. And here we come across our first not safe for work scene. So this will be cut out of YouTube. If you want to watch the not safe for work scenes, they will be available on my Patreon. And thus they have advanced. Vienna's division of heavy riding runes is approaching the Slavic lands. Vienna is at the head of the squad. Our black Varun is larger and meaner than the others and the sun plays merrily on its armor. Only Vienta herself isn't having much fun. She looks at her companion with a sour face. Yes, it's definitely a male, and he's definitely not her type at all. Isn't even fit to devour, and that's how unappealing he is. He appears weak. Vienta is confident she could knock him over with a mere glance. And these glasses of his? Are you kidding me? His name is Malsus. He doesn't even know how to ride a Varan. Can... can we go slower? We can. The division moves at the same pace, and Malsus, nearly flying out of the saddle once more, casts a panicked glance at Vienti. 
but we won't. You can write in someone's arms if you can find someone who agrees to that. The warriors behind Vanti chuckled mockingly. But I know the Supreme Mother ordered you to protect me. Because my research is important. Vanti shrugged. Yes, that was the way it was, but so far Mouse is nothing more than a nuisance. You should ride in the cargo cart. It's the perfect place for someone like you. Most of the stuff in there is yours anyway. But... Taking it as a command, his Varon speeds up. Oh, good girl. Please, please slow down. A snide comes from behind him. Take care of your ass. The warriors are audibly laughing. It's a gelding, you fool. No one in their right mind would entrust you with a female. She'd eat you alive. Praying to the mathematics, this will be over soon. Malsus shrinks in the saddle, trying to hide from the laughter around him. Adventuring is not for him, especially in a company as such. It does not resemble any of the Plains and People campaigns he played. Don't even think about getting lost. We'll leave you to the Slavs. They'll make Lacti out of you. L Lapti. It's pronounced Lapti. And they're made to bark. Shut it, smartass. Laughter raises again, and a comment, Somebody should sit on his face and end him already. <laughs> they're all so mean to him. Malsus turns around nervously, trying to see which of the warriors is about to assault his innocence. I'd rather sit on a log. I'd feel more. She tugs the reins of her monitor and moves it forward, leaving the troop just behind. Mouse is even more uncomfortable with the halo jokes he's getting. All these strange and comprehensible new windows are unnerving. Meanwhile, life goes its course in the Slavic village. Father Baikal softly hums as warriors gather for their war games. Girls walk towards the river, stegosaurus grazing beside the fence, and children lunch stringed pterodactyls from the roofs. All is calm. Don't go too far, boys. The lizard will take you. Maybe. The group of children start laughing, all fair, ruddy, and blonde. Miloslava sighs as she adjusts the carrying pole on her shoulder. The children laugh at her warning. Indeed, Slavs have defeated the lizards a long time ago. Not even a single lizard folk scale has been found here since the great winter. One boy isn't laughing, though. Z why? Just why? Zidane is what I'm going to call it, even though it's clearly not how you spell Zidane. Zidane is his name. Just yesterday he yelled about seeing lizards on the other side of the river. But nobody cares about that. Zidane imagines seeing them as often as every week. The children laugh it off and run away towards the field. Miloslava is suddenly tugged by the hem of her dress. No, Mirka, spit it out. Mirka phlegmatically chews the hem of her sundress, caught in her mouth along with a bunch of dandelions. Nice mount. Nice quote-unquote cow. Gay day, sister. You don't need any help, do you? Gay day, Redibor. Can't you tear my hem out of her mouth, eh? Did... What? Are we Canadian now? Ah, uh, still putting everything in her mouth all the time, isn't she? Redipore easily pulls Mirko away by her thick, scaly tail. A warrior's a warrior. Moving Stegosaurus, fighting fires, all in his own good way. Are you not afraid of walking alone? Miloslava shrugs, and the sundress on her chest tightens. What's there to be afraid of? Besides, if somebody tries anything, I'll just hit them with my pole. Right between the eyes. Or Mirka will get them. She'll chew anything up, if only slowly. Mirka is just starting to munch on the neighbor's waddle with an appetizing crunch. 
And I can't just sit around too. Orca needs to graze. And the water needs to be collected. You need a man, sister. And a good one. Meaning you, huh? You could be my son at your age. Another Mudroslav. I don't want anyone. His talks about the birds and the bees, it was so engaging. Yeah, may you rest in peace, sister. And where are you going? The band is going for a hunt. I went out early. Needed to harness a Stavroslav. Why is everything a Slav? <laughs> well, you keep your eyes open. The kids say they saw lizards on the other side of the river. Oh, lizards. I'm with a band. Nothing will happen. We'll play the music until they run away. Malislava laughs, making her breasts almost tear her sundress. I read a horse stares at them like a marvel. Well, you should go. Or they'll leave without you. Leaving you alone in the field. Ah, oh, I just wanted to make you laugh a little bit more. <laughs> so her breasts would jiggle. He's waiting for them to, like, come out of their dress. Suddenly a thunderous yell is heard. Ah, uh, it's Vidaris calling me. Well, see you later, sister. Milislava only watches him go and sighs. Ah, uh, Radabur is such a nice guy, but he's too young. His head is full of nothing. He is not Mudroslav, not at all. In the meantime, there were two ways before Radabur. Either to go straight to the forest or to his friends, who were waving at him from the lake. And the way they are waving. What's that? Suspicious. Have they found something? Aha. Uh -huh. Quite a bit different from the usual icons I'm used to seeing. But, same concept. So there are more routes to take than just one. Okay, I like that. I thought it was just one. Which I thought was a little bit odd to have just one full route, but you know. Let's go to the lake. To the lake to check out the commotion. Redivore's feet carry him towards the lake, as if Perum himself guides him there. Gay day, Redivore. Took you long enough. Always the tardiest of the party. I just stumbled on Miloslava on my way here. Ah, well. Is that so? She's a good woman. Think you're getting married? Come on, brother. She's old enough to be my mom. Only because she said so. Besides, I need a sturdier one. The one who can stop a galloping horse. The one who can enter into a burning hut. A match for me in battle. A warrior. And with a whip, right? Why the whip? You'll find out when you're older. Dude, how old is he? Radaris winks and suddenly presses his finger to his lips. Quiet, he says. The other warriors are already huddled in the bushes, quieter than water, lower than grass. <laughs> with a scream, Dolbaslav falls out of the bushes right into the water. The girls with a shriek scattering for their shirts. You oaf. Creeper. We'll tell Radaris all about you. The girls run away, leaving only ringing laughter in their wake. Ugh, spoiled all the fun. What an idiot. Gone without even taking their shirts. 
It's not my fault. I fell. If you didn't, I'd push you myself just for spoiling everything. The warriors laugh it off, then proceed to the woods to have their war games. And so the warriors gathered in the woods to compare their strengths, and maybe their clubs, too. Gay day, good men. We'll fight today on foot and unarmed. Look at how lazy you've become. If this goes on, you'll only be good for lying around on the stove and eating pancakes all day long. You should always be ready, as our father Perun willed. The army band with the indignant cries. You better trust us, they mean. Our clubs are strong and our bodies are sturdy. And what should we be ready for, brother, Vidaras? It's a quiet life. The pitch and eggs haven't been invented yet. Yeah, unless we fight with Nayaz and his band. Compete in valor and strength. Some of these words... Obviously, letters are silent. But it's like... Okay, it's a fantasy setting. Sure, and fantasy characters have weird names, but... Knyaz... Compete and compare. That's all you can think about. Ha! Trust me. If the lizards come, what will they see? Us hiding about our huts? Settling our women? That's all grandma's fairy tales. Nobody's seen those lizards in, like, forever. He became a valet girl now. You never know when these bastards might return. It's better to be ready for things that won't happen than be caught off guard by things that will. Vidaris raises his finger in an instructive manner. The men marveled at the ruler's wisdom and listened. So shut up, you brats. If not lizards, maybe the pitch and eggs will be invented soon. Or some other bullshit. So get your knuckles out of your asses and reason to fight. Oh, and off with your shirts, too. Warriors, some laughing, some grumbling, split into two teams. They take off their shirts and start flexing at each other, braggingly. Is this how they play their war games? Just like, who's got the most muscles? Who's got the biggest dick? <laughs> Vadera sits down on a stump and, scratching his beard, keeps an eye on the ranks to make sure no one gets too far as to actually murder somebody. Redivore, having defeated Dolbaslav, comes up to him, sweaty and ready, and sits down beside him. So how much do you know about lizards, uncle? More than you. Some scary beasts they are. Their women are crazy, all carrying swords, flushing with their skills and tits too. Ka, lizards with tits? What do they even need them for? I heard their goddess or something gave each woman a pair to distract her men. A sinologic attack, it's called. You don't even know such words, I bet. That's just crazy talk. Crazy, huh? As my grandfather used to say. A fool he was, your grandfather. Let's finish this up and go celebrate. Rug and women, that's all we need after a long day, right? Vidari spits angrily into the grass. All you want to do is to drink liquor and harass girls. A serious warrior should be sober and always on the lookout. Oh, come on, uncle. Can we have a cup of mead at the end of the fifth weekday? Other warriors agree. Perun himself said to drink meat on Fridays. And to feel of girls who've had enough meat already. What kind of life would it be for a slav if he couldn't have these things? Meanwhile, in the lizard's camp, the preparations are being made. Nina Viber tents flutter slightly in the wind. Lizard workers set up grills and build fires. Warrior women polish their spears. Vinti rests in a camping chair with her head leaning back, relaxed. What do we even need that backwater hamlet for? We could have hit something more important. It'd only take a day at most. We'll waste more time on our trip here and back with all these logistical regulations. Start from the center, I say. That is all it would take. It was going so well before their barbaric ice magic hit us. Well... Maybe. She cuts herself off. One can't always tell if the mother watches and listens. 
And Vianda herself isn't so sure of her ideas. Fine. The Supreme Mother is smarter than me, isn't she? I'm sure she knows better. And this weakling really can sell the formulas of the magic water, and the idol will help us reproduce faster, then Slaus will have nothing to oppose us with. Vinti smiles and beckons the nearest servant to bring her dinner. It's about time she got some refreshment. The servant bows gingerly and runs off in the direction of the camp kitchen. Vinti had managed to turn almost everyone in the camp somewhat hostile to her with her endless nitpicking. Now the whole camp is trying to stay away from her, tensely wondering what she might be up to next. She doesn't give a damn. A servant finally brings her a tray decorated with various formulas, then hurriedly disappears in an unknown direction before Vienti can order anything else. Fine, what do we have? Some seaweed, a strange powdered puree, a couple of whole roasted creatures, and some local vegetables. Curiously shaped ones, too. Vienti licked her lips. The creatures, whatever they were, disappeared into her mouth with an appetizing crunch so fast she barely had time to taste them. Vianti didn't even realize how hungry she was. Puree and seaweed got a little more attention. Her initial hunger was already satisfied to a degree, after all. Familiar food, albeit a little boring. That leaves only vegetables, rather mysteriously shaped. Why the eggplants? Cucumbers? Is it an appetizer? Dessert? A main course? The only thing Vanti knows for sure is that these things remind her of something very pleasant. Sturdy, oblong, and such a lovely color as a lizard flesh. Maybe cucumbers then. Quickly finishing the last bite, she sighs heavily. Fatigue is what she's feeling right now. Tired and annoyed. She could spend the rest of the day in the chair under the awning. Nobody would protest against it, considering her rank. Still. She can't show weakness to others. No way. While others fool around, she must stay on her guard. Putting the tray aside, Vianti stands up and slowly stretches. It's nice to feel like a taut string for a moment. Or a blade ready for a deadly strike. She raises her arms, looking contentedly at her reflection in the tray. Tense, taut muscles, breasts lifted by the movement, threatening and seductive. Vienti moves, repeating the curves of the combat function charts, and this little exercise makes the fatigue slightly recede. And that's much better. She smiles, her blood worn by the exercise lifting her spirits slightly. I guess Mother really does know what's more important here. Even that ridiculous puny male. Maybe he really will figure out the secret of the Baikal water. Vienti freezes mid-thought. Puny. By the way, where's the puny one? No matter what she told him, she couldn't let herself lose sight of him. He is an important part of Mother's plan. She'd have to find him. And probably get him out of trouble. Holy Mother Mathematics, where has he gone off to? Uh oh. Mushrooms. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, 
We seem to get a lot more turns than with uh, the furry shades and furry titty games. In the open fields. Vienta decides to go look for Malsis in the fields, so she heads towards a gap between the trees. Baikal is somewhere in that direction. Maybe the Brad got carried away with his research disregarding the dangers. They are in the very depths of Slavic lands. She can only guess what these warm-blooded barbarians do with prisoners. Do they eat them? Make clothes out of them? Or maybe scarecrows to frighten children. This was what her people were talking about before the glacier hit, at least. Maybe they feed prisoners to their hairy monsters. What were they called? Cows? Cows? Well, who cares what they call them? Something that's gonna eat you. She picks her way through the weeds until she comes to the edge of the field. Huge, endless, lit by the setting sun. Vienta freezes, looking at it. Such vastness. So much land. And... What is that? <laughs> Vienta probably ducks and takes a step back. Milko, why are you yelling? Lizard, they're in the bushes. What a monster. And with fiery eyes, too. Lizard, what are you talking about? That's crazy. I saw it! A scary lizard with gold tits! It's called plated armor, okay. The female burst into tears. The, my dad's working on something. There was a moment of silence there, I apologize. The female burst into tears. Vienta manages to escape unnoticed amidst the noise. The male does not seem to believe the story. Thanks, the mathematics. She steps back far enough, but there is still sobbing and swearing coming from the bushes. The lizard is there! The lizard! Oh, if you don't want to do it, just say it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what my dad is doing. Luck was on Vienti's side. The male didn't notice her. You just sit there. Hide away, don't eye anyone, and maybe you'll survive. I wasn't eyeing anyone or anything. I was just sitting there. And exuded the pheromones of not getting laid. Yes. As soon as we clear the way, we'll get you to buy Cal. But in the meantime, keep a low profile. Don't get in trouble and don't stink. Malsus doesn't even know how to respond to that. He's both embarrassed and offended, and he's pretty sure he didn't provoke anyone. On the other hand, trying to explain it to Vienti would be taxing. He just ended up getting reprimanded again. You can prepare your vials or whatever you want, but always be in the plain sight. I... okay. He doesn't even try to explain to Vienti that his lab isn't about any vials. He already tried that a couple dozens of times. She just doesn't seem to care what he's saying. Now the warriors want to listen to him, not counting Alakinshi, and it would be for the best if she didn't either. He was already regretting trying to explain anything to her about his research. She seemed genuinely interested in listening, but it seemed like she just wanted to bushwhack him the whole time. Vienti had already stepped aside and gathered the lower ranked warriors. It looked like something was brewing. Listen to my command. The warriors lined up in a triangle, fall silent and stare at her, tails wagging slightly in curiosity. The slabs are closer than we thought, and there are many of them here. We move at dawn. Everybody, check your thermo armor bras. <laughs> I don't want any of you to pass out from the cold during the attack. But is it wise to attack now? They're having some kind of celebration. Everyone will be tired. Their males will be hung over. So yes, it would be wise. Especially considering we'll have a rest and they won't. 
The female warriors murmur approvingly, and Alakinshi is unhappily silenced. Vianti is careful not to show her subordinates how nervous she is. It's been quite a while since they've done all that, raiding and fighting. A long time indeed. The next morning might be a rough one. Alright, bring down the alcoholic bottles. Or clear all. I don't know. For Viente. Viente's division is quietly moving through an already deserted field. Not even an army, not even a battle. Just a little reconnaissance. Everything should be fine, so Vienta reassures herself. It had indeed been quite some time since she had last been in a real fight. Just as she had suspected, the careless, warm-blooded barbarians got drunk with their stupefying slurry and are now lying about easy prey. Howling comes from the roadside ditch. Did the slabs put out lying sentries? A tetrapod steeled. What? Moves across the field. Take me away, completely ye- Is someone talking? No, apparently it's just a drunken slob singing his barbaric songs. Okay. The closer they got to the village, the more they encountered these singing ditches. Oh, not in vain even before Glacier, the cunning great mother had begun sabotaging the slobs. The great alcoholic invasion. And now it gives fruit. We are slavs. The whole world is spiteful. Oh, pedal, lucky, how the fuck is it going to go on? The shaman has three titties. Eh, no, asshole. Not that. It's all wrong. Look, their males are also interested in poetry now. Lucky us. Her warriors chuckle quietly. If mouses were here, he'd say something like, The alcohol's anti-structure clearly neutralizes the effect of bical water. Thanks to the mathematics, he's not here. The division gets to the village without any resistance whatsoever and starts splitting into teams. One group for each big gate, one to cover the retreat, and a strike team led by Vienta herself. Most of the slabs had sprawled into their dwellings just before dawn. Now some of them were staring out the windows in horror, but. Matriona lizards, green ones with tits. You've got green lizards with tits running around the walls every villa's day. You should drink less, you bastard. Little by little, the slabs begin to realize that it is no hallucination, and they are being attacked by their long-forgotten enemies. The hungover village shrieks, cracking under the paws and tails on the monitors here and clucking with the voices of chickens and pterodactyls forced out of their paddocks there. The paralyzing quantum spears of the warriors pierce without missing. Vanti's pleased. They'll need a lot, a lot of warm-blooded people to experiment with the water, and they can interrogate someone about the idol's whereabouts. It's odd that there are so few males. The Supreme Mother said they were better suited for experiments. But the idol. They need the idol first. Look for a building that stands out. Something like that. With ribbons, spires, domes and all. The idol's probably in there. But just to be on the safe side, search all the dwellings. And what you've already searched, set it on fire to avoid confusion. The strike team salutes and scatters to search the huts. The not yet paralyzed females howl and secrete gross fluids from their faces. Ew. Oh, they're crying. <laughs> 
I was thinking the lizard folk were doing that. But the lizards are deaf to their pleas. Vienti spurred her monitor and moved forward. All this noise is annoying, making it hard to concentrate and navigate the illogical and winding passages between the houses. Finally, her gaze lands on a building less like all the others, painted white and red, with a decoration in the form of a vegetable sticking out of the roof. Or is it not a vegetable? Vienti gets off the monitor and moves towards the door. The people running out of the building with white fur on their faces don't look particularly dangerous. Ah, those must be the elders. They're easy to defeat, if you know how. The warrior woman deftly grabs the elders by their long fur and cuts them off with a swing of her antichrist dagger. The warm-blooded ones fall, slain. What a bunch of wimps. Vienti snores and enters the building. Looks like she's just in the right place. Yes, looks like this is the right place. The creatures on the walls are looking at Vienti with judgment. What are they doing up there? Vienti gets closer to the wall, looking at the carved pictures. The characters in them are mostly busy breeding, or something similar. Here's one of the elders doing something with a bread roll. Next to him is a young man demolishing a... pie? Males, females, and other creatures, including a bear and even a couple saurians and a moose with phallic antlers. Here is a warrior with two maidens at once. Here is a painted maiden doing something with an oblong vegetable. And from the bushes, a bear is looking at her judgmentally. Bears, warriors, mermaids, moose, and a crowd of maidens. Do slabs really entertain themselves, though, or are these just metaphorical? Such vulgarity. Indescribable vulgarity. She shakes her head, trying to get the images out of her head, but somehow they're lodged tightly into her brain. Worse, the sight was even starting to arouse her. Ah, so this is the biofield of the idol. Now Vienta is sure this is the right place. The idol is somewhere in here. Of course, in plain sight, on a stepped pedestal in the middle of the room, there it is, the idol. Actually, it looks like a simple human penis. Or rather, a human holding his human penis in his human hand while looking like a human penis himself. It's worth recognizing that humans are very mysterious creatures. Who would even think of that? It looks like it's made of wood, but Vienti doesn't know much about that kind of thing. She wished she did, though. There's something about that ugly human outgrowth. Something about it that makes you want to touch it. Vienti shakes her head. She must focus on her mission. She throws the offerings off the steps to grab that stupid figure. The idol is... warm? No. It probably just got a bit hot from the candles. Candles, shaped like an idol, still burn around the empty pedestal, illuminating the room with an uneven light. The candle's flames sway slightly, which is probably why the pictures on the wall seem to be moving. Some kind of shadow play, no doubt. The warriors, rested after the military training, wake up and lazily crawl down to have breakfast near the bonfire. Kissel, pancakes wrapped by their wives, soured milk and pies. Eh, uh, how about an ice-cold bath in the Baikal waters? You'd be awake and alert in a heartbeat. The warriors only chuckle and yawn. Their muscles are sore after the exercises of the day, and their heads are empty as they were in the morning. But sober, Vidaris didn't allow warriors to drink during training. What if they hurt themselves? Or someone? What if they hurt someone or get themselves killed? I read that backwards. <laughs> Drunken warriors too often get run over by passing trees. It's a common story. At least that is how the warriors themselves tell it. I was walking and a tree came running at me. I don't remember anything else. Everyone believes them, of course. Vidaris was just telling how... Babrinya. Babrinya! The warrior was scuffling with the trees when someone's cry came from the field. 
The warriors jumped up. Who was that that thought of hurting the weak? A maiden runs out to them, sobbing, disheveled and wearing only one shoe. And even that shoe is hanging on by a fair thread. Good warriors. It started. Oh, how terrible indeed. They are here. Did Doboslav fall into the swamp again? Lizards. They attacked the village. Now they are burning the huts, taking boys and girls captive. The village smelled of fumes, and the maiden's face was sooty. Vidaris frowned and struck the empty cauldron like a bell. Come on, fellow soldiers, put on your pants and get your blades in your hands. <laughs> that's that's one way to go about it. Now we'll hit them with these Slavic pears. What the hell are they thinking, burning our village? How dare they? It didn't take a minute. The warriors gathered and marched to the village, and they left the maiden with Stavroslav to cover the bonfire and hide from the lizards. In the village, noise and smoke. Frightened cattle rushing through the streets, howling up to the heavens. Domesticated Pteroslavs frightened her flying around, shitting on everyone's heads. <laughs> In a word, a mayhem. Vidara sees the vile lizards, dragon maidens, and boys in nets, and he gets enraged. Charge. The Slavs don't know the word back. Beat the creepy crawlies. We'll tear their tits off now. The army took out the battle cry and rushed to attack. Swords and axes glittering, their stomps making the ground shake. Good Slav warriors, righteously marching with swords firmly held in their hands, each warrior worth a dozen. Only Doboslav fell behind again. Something flew into his eye from the sky from a frightened flying saurus. That sucks. My dad got pooped on the shoulder by a seagull once. He said he heard it splat. <laughs> the good young men catch the lizards by surprise, and a hot fight ensues. The lizards are hissing, clashing their teeth, shaking their tits, and the band is trying to push them with clubs and swords to the outskirts. Vidaris fights in the ring of enemies, three axes at once. Young warriors make their way to him. Redivore sees something. A busty lizard comes out of the red sanctuary, carrying the holy relic behind his back. You scaly, crawling beast. Put it back where you found it. I'm gonna... He grips his sword tighter and runs after the tail, which just disappeared around the corner. He had to examine his idol, trying to figure out what just happened. But now it looks like an ordinary piece of wood, not causing any strange desires. She sighs and shoves the idol under her arm. Howls and war sounds coming from the outside can be heard. While she was having fun here, it looks like the warriors have returned. Vienta picks up her spear and runs out of the shrine to look around. She sees a warrior running right her way, running and shouting and waving his sword. Hmm, what a big one. She quickly turns the corner of the shrine, grips her spear tighter, and prepares for battle. Come on, you warm-blooded fool, get over here. Let's see what you can do. The Slav lunges up from around the corner, nearly tripping over her tail, and immediately rushes to attack. The iron sword hits the shaft of her spear, but it can't be cut that easily. Weak Slav. Not quite my tempo. She throws him back, grinning. Are these really the Slavs who bested them in battle? The Slav rushes at her again, not particularly caring about strategy. It's just blow after blow, and Vanta definitely parries them all, but she must admit, the slab is strong, and fast. If he were a little slower, Vanti would have grown bored long ago, but the power and fury of his blows. It's been a long time since she's been su she's seen such passion and such rage, such energy. You're pretty entertaining. The warm-blooded... Th Oh my god, why am I having such difficulty reading? <laughs> the warm-blooded one only growls and howls in the I think it's the certain words that are together. 
Maybe the fur on his face prevents him from speaking clearly. Are human males even capable of speech? PNT thinks about it so deeply that she almost takes a hit and briefly loses her balance. The spear falls down and she bounces back to avoid being hit by the next one. Inspired by the advantage he just gained, the warrior strikes another powerful blow with a wide swing. At the last moment, Vienti dodges and... Ha! Huh. The sword gets stuck in the wall of the sanctuary. While the slab is trying to pull it out of there, Vienti has already managed to pick up her spear to strike the furry head with it. Warrior falls to the ground and tries to crawl away. Vienti towers over the defeated man with an evil smirk on her face. Didn't last for long. She's about to finish him off with a precise spear thrust, but then something white falls on her face. An attack from above? You could say that. No, it's just a pterodactyl. As she wipes the excrement from her face, the warrior finally pulls out the sword stuck in the wall. And here they are again, facing each other, weapons at the ready. Vienti looks up irritably. Mindless creature. Why did it have to take a shit right then and there? That would have been such a glorious hit. I'm gonna kill you, wench. Oh, so it can talk. The warrior rushes to attack once again. Let's see how this goes, eh? I'm not getting a bunch of claws here. A little help would be nice. I mean, there was no claws in that line. What the hell? <laughs> that was pretty good. Give me a whole lot, but it gave me just enough. The lizard woman is too quick. Redivore gritted its teeth as he watched the foul lizard slip away from his blows again and again. On top of that, she's also mocking him, the scaly wench. Well, at least now, in the shadow of the shrine, the breastplate will not blind the eyes of the warrior. A breastplate? Radivore stares at her armor. Not only does the lizard have no pants, but she also has... Boobs. A lizard with boobs? Videras wasn't lying. The lizard snorts viciously and attacks again instead of answering. Radivore is defending himself well, but something is bothering him now. It does not let him rest. His gaze is moving away from the sword and feet of the enemy. What is going on with him? Boobs. He's like a teen. A teen seeing his first pair of boobs. Except they're covered. Large and squishy. Almost like the maidens of his people have. Only scaly and dressed in shameful gilded garbs. And what a fighter. Uh, if only she had no scales. Redabor would immediately marry her. Vidaris warned him. 
The lizard goddess attached the tits to these winches in order to confuse the warriors. They were fighting, fighting, and Redobor would glance at the obscenity jumping in front of his nose. He looks this way and that way, and thinks all sorts of thoughts that are inappropriate to have while in battle. Yeah, dirty thoughts. Ruined for a good young man. Redobor, distracted by the gilded tits, gets a spear to his heated head. Redobor. Vidaris, alone in the ring of enemies, calls out to him. The foul lizard rushes to Vidaris, followed by Radabor. He must rescue his comrades in arms, or the winches will capture him. Something shiny and rattling gets under his feet. Is it the lizard's panties? Radabor stumbles and falls, hitting the back of his head against the temple wall. And he can see nothing anymore. Vienti runs fast enough to make it in time and support a group of her exhausted kin at the right moment. The warrior they were fighting was even stronger than her past opponent. He must be the local commander. But he's already exhausted, alone and cornered, and missing his third axe. On command, a group of warrior women attack him again, but now Vienti is with them. The warm-blooded one cannot defend himself. A barrage of precise blows, a timely throw net, and the bearded Slav is lying on the ground. Tie him up. We're taking him with us. She plans to interrogate the captives. How do they use the idol? What do they do with the Baikal water? And what do they eat to grow so huge? The Supreme Mother will surely love it. And the Four Eyes will have something to work with. The other groups of warrior women were already tying the unconscious warm-blooded ones, poking particularly loudly howling females with paralyzing spears. Hopefully some good will come of them. None are fit for combat. How disgusting. They are nothing but us. Lizards. Vienti thinks about the casualties. The Slavs were still able to fight back against the invasion. Even if they are so weak and pathetic. Something in Vienti's mind makes her remember the fight with that one Slav over and over again. The one whose sword got stuck in the wall. Something important. Wish male lizards were like that. Strong and mighty, rushing into battle and ready to fight into the last man as it used to be. To conquer the Slavs. Once and for all. The idol in her bag grows slightly warm, as if to echo the thoughts she pushes as far away from her mind as possible. Mistress Dominant, we folded all the warm blooded ones. Shall we move out? Yinti pulls her hand from the idol bag, and the memories of the warriors fade away. She turns to see a young lizard woman saluting, one of the sergeants, young, still green. Aren't you all green? Her name is... Viente can't remember her name. Yes, we're going back to camp. Make sure no one's left behind. Pass the order. Yes, ma'am. They retreat, leaving the village of the Slavs to burn. Viente gets ahead on her monitor to lead the division. And also to secure her subordinates from noticing the way her gaze shifts every time she thinks about checking the idol in her bag. I must take that Slav for... A private investigation. He must have important intel. A lot of it. Around half a meter of it. What is she thinking about? Will the snakes master of hypnosis perform the interrogation as they always have? And she'll go about her business of directing the division. She had accomplished her main task. The rest is up to the Supreme Mother and that stupid four eyes. Radibor opens his eyes, surveying his surroundings with confusion. Did the battle truly happen, or is it merely a figment of his imagination? However, the evidence is undeniable. His keen eye spots the silhouettes of lizards departing from the village, dragging along a line of downtrodden captives. 
Springing to his feet, Radabor quickly checks for his most prized possession, his hand instinctively searching for his sword amidst the chaos of battle. Spotting it nearby, lying in a puddle where it had been knocked aside during the skirmish, he retrieves it with determination. Examining his reflection in the puddle, Radabor sees a battered and disheveled version of himself, bearing the mark of a lizard spear upon his neck. It is but a trace, even though she could have done much more. No, I don't have the time to think about this. Shaking out distracting thoughts, he readjusts his armor and strides purposely towards the lizards. The weight of responsibility for all Slavic people now rests upon him, or so he believes. It is imperative to discern the intention, intentions of the invading lizards in the direction in which they lead their captives. Their path lies through a field where young boys and girls usually play around. Redibor knows it well, like a gopher born in it. Like an agronomist, and that word passes his mind. He reprimands himself for thinking like a lizard himself. He seems to have bumped his head in the fall, and that must be the reason. Redibor manages to stealthily trail them, weaving between logs and concealing himself within dense thickets until he finally catches up near the forest. The remainder of the journey is fraught with obstacles, Redibor gathering more turnips and splinters than available information until the camp of the lizards comes into view. I don't think so. Redibor freezes, crawling silently closer to the lizard woman with golden breasts. It's evident. She holds authority here. Or else why would she even have golden tits, right? Oh wow, look at her. Oh, which, which one's hotter? Do you think the cobra is hotter or the normal looking lizard? I like the cobra. It's the hood and maybe the outfit. Opposite the warrior, stretched out on her tail, stands a snake. Its hood is spread wide, its mouth agape, its forked tongue flicking across its cheeks. A sizable specimen indeed. That's an order. Show it to me. Redivore in the bushes tries to hold in his laughter. What a funny language they have. He ponders for a moment. The snake's tits aren't small either. They could probably squeeze three full buckets out of them. Her body is shiny, too, like she's covered in oil. Scratching his beard, Radibor keeps pondering. Who's really in charge here? A snake or a lizard? Do they also have toads and frogs? And who thought it wise to entrust women with the task of fighting? Excuse me? That's inhumane. The snake and the lizard keep hissing at each other, waving their hands around in a threatening manner. It almost seems they will start comparing their busts next. Wouldn't it be funny to look at them fighting? Or so Redbor thinks, moving his hand closer to his crotch. The rest of the band also grows increasingly agitated. Hisses, crackles, grumbles fill the air, a natural response to discord among war warlords, as Vidaris would have noted. The thought of Vidaris pricked Redbor's conscience sharply. His uncle had saved his life. It wasn't something to take lightly. Vidaris had diverted the lizard's attention when Redibor was momentarily incapacitated. But now, where was he? Meanwhile, the lizards moved about, conversing in their sibilant tongue, their presence of moral decay spreading in all directions. Redibor gazes at their chests, contemplating. Seems like leadership hinges on their assets. Whoever boasts the most prominent assets rises to power. What a ridiculous notion they've concocted. Truly shameful. Nearby, lizards with smaller assets, evidently of lower rank, huddled together, discussing matters beyond Redipor's comprehension. He could only catch snippets of their conversation. And so she says to me, strength is in truth. Imagine that. Really? I thought strength is measured in jowls. Redbore listens to the nonsensical chatter, deep in thought, chewing on the tip of his beard in concentration. Slavs need to be saved, and who is going to do it if not Redbore? Same place, same time. If you had made it this far, 
in this playthrough. Thank you so much, and I hope you've enjoyed it so far. This is just the first hour of the playthrough. The rest of the playthrough will be available to my Patreon supporters. And once again, I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough. Until next time.